All right, so today um, we're going to be rebarreling a Tika action. Um, my friend uh, Travis is going to be uh, building a uh, 35 Whalen AI, AI, actually improved. Um, in Iowa, they recently adopted uh, straight wall rifle calibers, and the way the law is written, you can also shoot bottleneck cartridges so long as uh, they're 35 caliber or larger and, and meet a certain energy requirement. Um, so uh, within those legalities, the, the 35 Whalen uh, falls and it, it makes for quite the step up from uh, what used to be slug only um, as far as accuracy and things. Um, so what I've got going on here, uh, I've got the Short Action Customs Bravo Barrel Vice. Um, I've got the uh, 8.70 or 0 .870 uh, bushing in there for the Tika barrel. Um, I'm going to tor torque this down to 35 foot pounds um, so that it holds the uh, barrel nice and firm. We've got some drywall uh, tape in here to protect the finish of the barrel from marring with the aluminum. Um, and then we've got the Short Action Customs Modular Wrench with the number five uh, head on it for a Tika action. Um, other tools you'll need, um, I've got the 3 8 uh, Allen key, a 5 8 socket for the end of the uh, uh, action wrench, I've got the Wheeler Fat Sticks here for torquing the uh, barreled action back to the stock to the appropriate spec. And then I have a torque wrench here um, for uh, torquing the barrel down to the appropriate spec. We may need to add some heat. Uh, Tika actions are notoriously uh, hard to, to take off. Um, I think they Loctite the action to the uh, barrel, um, so it might need a little bit of heat. The uh, rifle's been in the vehicle overnight, uh, and it's January in Iowa, so the, the uh, barrel's nice and cool, so we may need to apply some heat, um, but without further ado, we'll get started. All right, so we had to audible. We changed from the... Uh, 0 0.870 uh, bushing to the 0 0.12 bushing. Uh, I was kind of trying to clamp on the taper there, um, but uh, we got a lot closer to the action. Um, I think we got a nice snug fit. Again, torqued the uh, barrel vise down to 35 foot pounds. Um, should have adequate clamping force to hold this uh, still as we. Uh, go to remove the barrel. Um, I'm going to use a breaker bar instead of the torque wrench for breaking this loose. Um, disclaimer, uh, Short Action Customs does not uh, warranty the modular wrench because if you're taking off a uh, factory action um, because they know that they're very high torque um, but uh, I've seen it done, so we could need uh, in excess of 200 foot-pounds to break this loose, but uh, Short Action Customs only warranties up to, I believe it's 125 foot-pounds. Um, but uh, with that said, I'm going to add a little bit of heat here to the action uh, around the circumference here for a little bit. and. Uh, then we'll uh, get to going with the action wrench. All right, so we got a little heat applied. Uh, one thing to note, uh, Tika does uh, cap their uh, base screw holes that are tapped with a plastic uh, plug. So you may want to uh, pull that out before you apply heat. Um, don't want to melt that plastic into those threads and stuff and not be able to get it out so you can't add your appropriate uh, scope base, but uh, without further ado here we're going to apply some torque here and hopefully break this free. Barrel's turning. 
Beleza? Apply more torque. So the barrel moved in the vise, so we're going to apply a little bit more torque to the uh, vise screws to uh, hopefully remedy that. All right, so we upped it to 45 foot pounds on the uh, barrel vise. Now we'll give it some juice. It's still wanting to turn, uh, so we're going to back this off. We might need a different bushing uh, on the barrel itself to get more surface area contact. All right, so what we ended up doing was rather than switching bushings, we added a little bit more tape. Uh, I think we were bottoming out. Uh, they were, the uh, bushings were touching. And that's where we were getting more clamping force was on the edge of the aluminum, not actually on the barrel itself. So we added a little bit more drywall tape uh, to expand the diameter because I didn't quite have a bushing that was right in the middle of where I wanted it to be. So we'll try it again here. Oh. All right, so we swapped camera angle here so we can go down with our torque rather than trying to lift up. I can already tell I'm, I'm able to apply a lot more force to it. Well, it finally gave up. Uh, I had to get uh, the big snap-on breaker bar out. It's about two feet and I was about jumping on it. Um, kudos to the Short Action Custom modular wrench. It held up. Um, I ended up having to go to the .870 bushing down on the barrel with quite a few wraps. Uh, it did slip in there, but uh, we did finally crank it down enough that uh, we were able to uh, apply enough torque to break the action free, as you can see. Um, so the next portion will be very, very easy because we don't need to apply 300 foot-pounds of torque to anything we just need to apply about 90 foot-pounds of torque so we'll go ahead and spin off the action get the other barrel uh, in the vise and we'll be back with you all right so we got the new 35 Whalen uh, AI barrel in the vise torque down to 35 foot-pounds we're going to torque the action to 90 foot-pounds uh, Put a little grease on the threads. Um, we'll go ahead and get this going here. We won't cut away for this part because it's not going to take a half an hour. All right, battery died there on the camera, but we haven't done anything since. So just got the action wrench in there. Uh, gonna change the torque setting on the wrench. Back to zero. There's 90. And as simple as that, 
the barrel is torqued to spec. Um, we don't have the go no go gauges. Uh, Travis will go ahead and uh, check those on his own, um, but you will want to make sure that the barrel is properly head spaced uh, to make sure you don't have excessive head space and uh, run into any issues with over pressuring or anything like that. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and put this uh, barreled action back in the stock and uh, we'll come back to you and give you one last little recap. All right, so we got things wrapped up. Uh, Travis is going to have to relieve his stock a little bit. That uh, barrel's a heavier contour than the uh, 270 was that originally uh, came with the rifle. Um, just kind of wanted to recap, so we used the short action uh, customs Bravo barrel vise coupled with the short action custom, customs modular action wrench uh, and the number five uh, modular portion of that uh, is what we use. Um, I'll give you a little close up here of what the drywall tape and things look like after we had to te uh, tighten it down so much so it kind of fused into the bushing on this side and it did slip some but uh, after we got adequate slippage it, it tightened back up again. Um, the overall finish on the Tika barrel uh, actually fared very well uh, even though it did slip. Um, I don't know if that would have been the case if it was Cerakoted or something like that um, but uh, with the uh, finish that they use on those uh, blued barrels uh, that seemed to be unaffected by it slipping inside of the barrel vise but uh, we torqued it down a good good chunk and uh, really uh, kind of gave it gave it the beans uh, we did you know need the the larger uh, breaker bar on that uh, we did have one one bigger breaker bar we could have went to that was a foot longer but uh, I didn't want to uh, break anything so if this one wasn't going to do the trick I think we were going to opt for a maybe non DIY approach but uh, we did get it and uh, that uh, concludes uh, this episode if, if you got any questions comments uh, anything like that uh, pop down into the comment section and I'll be sure to answer them. Uh, if you uh, want to go and like and subscribe, we're going to uh, be doing putting out some more content like this. Uh, you know, gunsmithing, reloading, uh, as well as, you know, hunting, all my hobbies, competitive shooting, uh, maybe a little bit of golf, uh, some cooking videos are coming up too. So. Uh, Stay tuned and we'll catch you guys on the next one.